Doesn't it seem like everything that used to be big is now getting small? My trusty old camera is now a tiny part of my smartphone. My big old desktop computer is now just an easily transportable laptop. And my ego, well, that might be an exception to the rule. <laughs> but it is true that a lot of technology that used to just be in the data center is now required for our embedded designs, like super high-speed serial connections, differential pairs, high-density connections. My old-school embedded connectors just aren't going to cut it anymore. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. The increasing sophistication of today's embedded designs is driving a major increase in the sophistication of connectors we need in our embedded designs. Today, my guest is Matthew Burns from Samtech, and we're going to talk about the next generation of connector technology for embedded designs. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about optimized interconnects for embedded applications from Samtech. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, it's very good to see you again. And it's good to see you too. Okay, so we're talking about interconnects specifically for embedded applications today. But Matt, this really just boils down to the need for smaller size, increased density, and faster data rates, right? That's correct, Amelia. Those are typically design features that are prominent within data center equipment solutions and data center applications. However, in reality, it's moving outside the data center into embedded applications such as embedded computing, edge computing, and mill aerospace. What's driving that? Well, one thing is we're seeing protocols such as PCI Gen 5 proliferate outside of the PC architecture. Embedded OEMs and component suppliers also want to incorporate the latest solutions from the silicon vendors within their applications. And there's just a need for more data throughput throughout the network. When we talk about embedded computing, applications there include kiosks, gas pumps, factory and process automation. Traditionally, those have been based on x86 architecture, but more and more we're seeing solutions such as FPGAs, SOCs, and GPUs there as the use of AI and other compute-intensive applications are required. From a silicon standpoint, we're seeing smaller, faster solutions with more transceivers. We mentioned also PCI Express Gen 5 and other fabrics like Gen Z and C6 are transcending the x86 PC architecture. Embedded applications increase performance and density, but with a smaller size. A lot of these solutions use system on modules, and because of the performance and the density within FPGAs going from maybe a few dozen to more than 100 transceivers, SOMs continue to get denser, and they also need increased connector pairs within a single SOM. When it comes to edge computing, a good example of what's driving the need for performance, density, and smaller form factors is the 5G rollout. With previous versions of cellular technologies, the cell tower was basically the RF receiver, that's an oversimplification, but it was basically the RF receiver. And then a lot of the signal processing and computing was done at the base station. However, edge computing is in the forms of active antenna systems, remote radio heads, intelligent sensors, IIoT, is really requiring or demanding computing being put out at the edge of the networks. So from an SI standpoint or from a signal standpoint, increased performance and density, but much smaller form factors. Another area that's increasing this demand, Amelia, is mill aero applications such as man pack radios and phased radar arrays. Whether that's phased radar array can be within aircraft or remote. All mill aero applications are focused on low swap, low size, weight, and power. And this is really driving performance across the networks that are proprietary for the mill aerospace. Okay, Matt. So we need to be looking closer at our board to board interconnects to achieve these high speeds, right? So what do you guys have in this realm? Samtech and via our partner, uh, Mauser, uh, offers the industry's largest variety of high-speed board-to-board interconnects. The graphic here illustrates depth and breadth of Samtech's portfolio. There's high-speed backplane, there's high-speed board-to-board, there's edge card, there's IO and other solutions. But the combination of all these solutions that Mauser and Samtech offer, as well as the world-class design experts, technical experts, online tools, and unmatched customer service are really answering the need for this increased performance we see within embedded applications. Okay, so Matt, what Samtech board-to-board connectors are typically found in embedded applications? That's a great question, Amelia. One of the solutions that are very popular within embedded applications within our portfolio are what we call open pin field arrays. These are a particular subset of our connector portfolio that feature lower insertion and extraction forces versus typical array products. 
The open pin field contact design also allows for maximum grounding and routing flexibility. If you look at the illustration there on the right, any single pin within an open pin field array can act as a differential pair, a singleted signal, or power. Plus, using our differential vias for optimized PCB routing, we can achieve high performance, high data rates. So each of these families that are mentioned here, the C-Ray, the C-Ray.8, the LP array, can support data rates of up to 56G PAM4. When we look at C-Ray, that's been a workhorse board-to-board -board interconnect for us for embedded applications for many years. You should be familiar with C-Ray, Amelia, because we've talked about that in numerous chalk talks for its performance within FMC and FMC Plus applications. It has many more application use because of the design flexibility that it offers. C-Ray.8 is a smaller version of C-Ray. It's denser as the pin-to-pin -pin width moves from 1.27 millimeter down to 0.8 millimeter. And then a newer family that we've come out with in recent years is our LP array, which has many of the benefits of C-Ray and C-Ray.8, but it's a very low profile. It has stack heights between 4, 4.5, and 5 millimeters. So in our discussions, I know that Samtech offers a number of board-to-board -board connectors targeted at embedded applications. Now, is there a solution, Matt, that offers the best of both worlds? Yes, and that's really the reason we're talking today, Amelia. We've received a ton of feedback from our customers and from our partners on features they'd like to see in next generation open pin field arrays. And our next generation solution that answers a lot of that feedback and those concerns is our Accelerate HD ultra dense multi-row strip. This has the performance, this has the density, this has the small size that embedded applications demand. Some of the key benefits of Accelerate HD is that it has a small stack height similar to LP array of five millimeters. It also has a very slim five millimeter width. We can get increased pin counts of up to 400 IO using a four row design. We mentioned the benefits of open pin field array in terms of grounding and routing flexibility and high speed performance. Accelerate HD is also PCI Gen 5 compliant. So that's creating a lot of demand for it in the market as we speak. It has a very tight pitch, 0.635 millimeter, but it also uses our legacy edge rate contacts that give it rugged ability and the performance that it needs. While we've released the initial products of the Accelerate HD family, as mentioned here, we continue to expand the product portfolio. We're working on right angle solutions as well as increasing the stack heights available from 7 to 16 millimeter as well. Moving into the next slide, this just gives a higher definition illustration of what Accelerate HD looks looks like within a customer-like application. You can see that it's very small, it's very dense. It offers hundreds of I.O. and a compact footprint without sacrificing signal integrity. And the combination of those three factors, high density, high performance, small form factor, are really making Accelerate HD a great solution for embedded applications. Okay, Matt, let's dig in and talk more about Accelerate HD. Now, that can get me to 56 PAM4, right? So what exactly does this solution look like? Well, this illustration here, Amelia, again, helps us to see from a different point of view all the key features that Accelerate HD has to get us to 56 gigabit per second PAM4 data rates. The small pitch, again, shows the density. You can see that this has four rows of pins, which is an enhancement over our previous strip style connectors that had two rows of pins, but we're able to do it in a very slim five millimeter width contact system. We've also optimized the performance and we've also optimized the breakout of the signals from the connector down to the PCB to enable us to achieve the 56 gigabit per second PAM4 performance that are critical to emerging embedded applications. This illustration shows 240 I.O., but as we mentioned earlier, we are expanding Accelerate HD to 400 I.O. as well. Another key feature as we move to this next illustration of Accelerate HD that's beneficial for embedded applications is the contact wipe. Now, you may ask, what does that mean as long as the connectors are making contact? Doesn't it work? In some mill arrow applications, the connectors are subject to shock and vibe to various standards. So having that longer contact wipe enables the devices to perform as advertised in rugged application. And this is all achievable due to the edge rate contact design that minimizes broadside coupling and crosstalk. Okay, so Matt, don't a number of systems on modules or SOMs use multiple connector pairs? What Accelerate H HD features benefit these types of applications? Again, that's another great question, Amelia. As we mentioned earlier, one of the trends we're seeing is as FPGAs and GPUs and other system level ASICs increase in density, increase in performance, the transceiver counts continue to grow. And the embedded application market space is demanding smaller form factor SOMs as a result. So trying to route the transceivers, the referential pairs, and the power from a SOM down to a carrier card, it's very hard to do that in a single connector pair. 
So SOMs are using two, three, four, or even more MATIC connector pairs just to route the signals from the SOM down to the carrier card. In a multi-connector pair environment, that can lead to some alignment issues if design practices are not followed. So one of the features that Accelerate HD has, it uses a BGA style termination, which when passed through a solder reflow manufacturing process allows the connectors to self-align. So that again, removes a lot of mechanical issues. The connectors can self-center, they can self line and it makes designing and assembling multi-connector pair SOMs pretty easy. Now, Matt, you mentioned open pin field earlier. Does this come into play here as well? It does. The open pin field design of Accelerate HD, again, allows for flexibility in terms of how engineers, system designers select their pinout. They can optimize the pinout from their SOM down to their carrier card for performance and layout. So we mentioned earlier, any one pin on the Accelerate HD can act as a differential pair, a single and signal, or power through the same connector. This is a key feature that system designers appreciate when it comes to designing their systems. So Matt, what if I'm working on a high power application? What can you guys do for me here? Amelia, that's a great question. In a number of SOM and carrier card applications, there may only be a few voltage rails. And some of the current ratings of power pins on the latest FPGAs may be 10, 15 or more amps on a single voltage rail. Using just the Accelerate HD is a viable option for many applications. However, the higher the current gets, the more pins that are required to route that through the Accelerate HD. That can take up board space. That can also be an expensive proposition for system designers. So one of the ways we combat that is to offer Accelerate HD working in conjunction with our MicroPower series of power connectors. So here we illustrate the UMPS and UMPT series, which are bladed power connectors. These can support anywhere between two to five blades right now, and each blade can handle up to 15 amps of current. So when you combine Accelerate HD with MicroPower, it really offers the best of both worlds in terms of high performance and power in a tight space. All right, Matt, this has been a bit to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Sure, Amelia. Samtech, in, in partnership with Mauser, we offer the largest variety of high-speed board-to-board interconnects within the industry. All the solutions that we've mentioned throughout the Chalk Talk, our C-Ray, our C-Ray Point 8, our LP Array, our Accelerate HD, and our MicroPower are available immediately from Mauser. Secondly, our Accelerate HD ultra-dense multi-row mezzanine strips offer an optimized blend of performance, size, and density for next-gen applications. We've talked briefly how these are finding homes in embedded computing, edge computing, as well as mill arrow applications. And lastly, your listeners can contact Samtech and Mauser for additional information and support as they start their next generation embedded application designs. Excellent. And I'll do just that. Well, Matt, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for your time again, Amelia. We appreciate it. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about optimized interconnect solutions for embedded applications from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.